Good evening, I'm Eugene Chan and welcome to Straight Talk. This evening, our spotlight is on the recent two sessions in Beijing. Joining us is Ms. Dari Lee, a member of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, to give us her insights into how the latest national policies will impact Hong Kong. Ms. Lee is also the former chairperson and current advisor of the Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong and the legislative councillor for the Kowloon Central Geographic constituency. Welcome, Stari. Hi. Stari, um, it has been quite some time we haven't had you on the show and this time we want to invite you because you've just been to the two sessions which was ended on Monday. So what was your experience like this year? compared to previous years that you have been, um, are there any difference? Well, I, I can experience uh, the uh, progress and advance of the two sections. Uh, like this year, uh, I feel you know, very glad to be able to join personally, and it is a very fruitful two section. And if you compare to previous two section, the time is uh, short, and uh, I would describe it as high quality and high efficiency. Um, we have complete seven a task. We have seven agenda. Uh, apart from uh, most published uh, government work report, actually we have deliberate on the budget and also the fund allocation between the central government and also different provinces. And uh, we have the report from the High Court and we have we have the report from the prosecution. Of course, as a lawmaking body, we also deliberate on a law related to the uh, 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 government structure. Right. Yeah. Sounds like a very fruitful seven yeah, days you yeah, in seven Beijing. Days. Um, I'm sure that a lot of viewers will want you to share with them what will be a typical day during the two sessions. Because on the television, we see you guys in front of the, the, the Great Hall taking pictures or during the, the, the actual meeting. But we have no idea what actually happens either before or during or after the, um, the, the meeting. What happened actually? Yeah, thank you for asking this question. I always share my experience as an NPC member and also as, an, as my experience as a standing committee member, because I would like to make use of my experience to let more people understand what are the actual the, the, mm -hmm. you know, situation and deliberation mm -hmm. that we have carried out. Yeah, before you NPC. start, what, what exactly is meant by standing committee? Oh, standing committee, you know, we have the National People's Congress system, and this is the top uh, authority in our country. Uh, basically, it governs the... the uh, constitution, if we have the constitutional amendment, we have to go through the NPC full Congress. And uh, you know, every year, these two sections attract a lot of it attention because it is the most important political event in our country. All the important report and uh, deliberation have to be carried out during the two section. You can think about this in the Hong Kong scenario, right? We have two important uh, events in Hong Kong, I would say. Uh, the policy address and the budget. Yes. And uh, just like um, uh, what we have in Hong Kong, but you know, we as a country, uh, we have to, you know, make use of these two sections. Therefore, apart from the government work report, just like our policy report, uh, just like our policy address in Hong Kong, we have our government report. Apart from that, we ha have to deliber deliberate our budget. And uh, how we do that, actually, just like what you said, uh, now, uh, the national leader will usually deliver a very brief uh, summary of uh, what has been achieved and what are the plan forward. Like uh, Premier Li, uh, he delivered around 50 minutes speech about the government report, and then this section end uh, before television. What we do as a, a members of the National People Congress, we like Hong Kong delegate, we live in the same hotel. We, uh, we then, in the afternoon, we will have a section for deliberation. You can think about that uh, it is actually a uh, Congress of our country, just like Legislative Council. But just the way, uh, well, conduct is similar to Legislative Council. Uh, we have government officials uh, to listen to our views. We, as members of the uh, People Congress, we have to after studying the report presented by our leaders, and then we give views, we give suggestions. Before attending the two section, we have to have a good preparation, like what we did. We, uh, as a team, put forward over 30 suggestions right. uh, to the central government. Of course, we, as a Hong Kong delegate, most of the suggestions are related to the Hong Kong community 
and different sector of the uh, Hong Kong uh, uh, society. Mm -hmm. We collect wheel before we uh, go to the two section. Um, and this year, we're glad that we have uh, reached a consensus to uh, become a suggestion made by the whole 36 Hong Kong I delegates. See. Right, since you have given such a detail of actually what you do there, um, but as you, as you come back home with Hong Kong, I mean, the Legislative Council actually meet um, weekly, except yeah. the summer. But for the, um, the, uh, the MPC member, they only mainly meet once, once a year in Beijing. So how can the views can be fully communicated? I know you're a standing committee, you go there every, every two, months. two months, you go there more often. So how can we ensure that our views can be um, um, effectively communicated and being addressed at the Congress? We have to understand uh, the difference between a city and a country. You know, we have around 3,000 uh, MPC members in total. Uh, uh, you can imagine, right, mm -hmm. people from different parts of our country come together to meet for a week is already very, you know, mm. uh, a very huge uh, exercise. Exactly. Therefore, we can only afford to have a full uh, council meeting uh, every year. That is, as I've mentioned, most of the important things have to be designed and deliberate within these this, uh, two sections. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when this section closes, then it is the standing committee member, uh, which is uh, composed of around uh, 200 people, uh, representative from different provinces and different sector, and then uh, we'll continue uh, 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 some deliberation. Like, for example, we will uh, go through a lot of uh, uh, bill scrutinization, and uh, it is actually a, a, a lawmaking body. Right, Stara, you mentioned earlier that you have to pre prepare to go into the two sessions. So you've been there a few times. Mm. How do you prepare yourself both mentally and physically? Because you're actually in Beijing. This yeah. time, at least you're not locked in a hotel. Are you, are you still being um, being confined to one hotel? Uh, no, not really. So um, you can go outside this time? Yeah, well, but of course, uh, they would like you to uh, concentrate on the meeting. Therefore, most of the time, we will be in the hotel, except for some of the uh, things that we need to do, like, for example, meet the media uh, to promote the Hong Kong and also to, 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 to do some important thing. Otherwise, right. we have to stay in the hotel. So, tip, so mentally and physically is quite demanding, can I say that? Oh, yes, because it is quite condensed. We run from Monday to Sunday, uh, every uh, days and uh, nights, I, I would say, because it is actually quite condensed. You can imagine seven agenda, in the morning, usually, uh, the leader gives the brief report and then you receive a lot of documents, including the government report. And also, right. apart from this government report, we have budget, we have a lot of supporting document, and then we have to scrutinize it in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. We will conduct a small group discussion, like, uh, for example, what we did uh, uh, to discuss the government report, and then uh, listen to people from different backgrounds, and then we write up our uh, speeches and suggestions. Right. And throughout that deliberation, uh, you know, uh, representative from different bureau will will come to Hong Kong delegate to listen and right. collect views, and they are quite responsive. Like for example, during the discussion of the government report, we do some suggestion. Like we advocate to increase the uh, uh, custom mm -hmm. uh, from five thousand to uh, thirty thousand for the mainland uh, tourists per for day. the mainland, mainland tourists per day, uh, right. and then we respond immediately. Uh, from the finance uh, bureau, mm -hmm. and then we exchange will. I will follow it up uh, when I'm back in Hong Kong. Right, Stara, before, we, before you share with the viewers what are the national policies that you sort of picked up, um, you just mentioned there are 3,000 members of the MPC mm. and also over 2,000 members for the um, CPPCC. Mm. So there's, there are a lot of people, a lot of comments. So how, I mean, how serious does the central government take Hong Kong's views? Because I mean, Hong Kong used to be, I mean, a, a very important city for a mm. um, nation. Recently, with the um, other major cities like Beijing and Shanghai, even Shenzhen doing better and better, and Hong Kong having some trouble, as we all know. We are not, relatively, we are not as important to many viewers. We are, we are, no, we are no longer the, the, the most favoured son. We, we can be a good son, but have to uh, get back to on his feet. So does the central government still view Hong Kong as very important? I, uh, my feeling is that, you know, central government, through 
uh, discussion with various national leaders do treasure Hong Kong very, very much. Uh, you know, we can have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 things that we can tell. Like, for example, uh, our presidency uh, do visit Hong Kong uh, during the important day and deliver important speech. He again re-emphasized that uh, one country, two system is a, is a good system and mm -hmm. that the country will, will continue. And Hong Kong should, you know, make use of one country, two system. That is, we have full backing from our motherland. On the other hand, we have to uh, continue to be uh, the international city of our country. Right. Apart from presidency, you know, this year, uh, different national leaders do come to visit the NPC delegate and also uh, members from the political consultative body. And we have the premier thing uh, to visit us, uh, like for example, during the meeting with Mr. Ding, we exchange view. Uh, there are uh, this meeting is around two hours, and he listened carefully to what MPC member said, and uh, do make a very you know detailed uh, sharing. And during his speech, he emphasized that he, on behalf of the central government, treasure Hong Kong very much, and you know uh, more and more policy will come to support Hong Kong's in the future. Right, Starry. Let's take a break now, but viewers, stay tuned. We will be right back for more discussion on the 2024 two sessions. Welcome back. Thank you, Starry, for giving us the main national policies arising from the two sessions and your insight into their impact on Hong Kong. Um, in the first half, we were mainly discussing the ins and outs of what are the two sessions. And, and you have categorically mentioned that Hong Kong is still very important and being respected by the, our national leaders. Um, let's move on, as I said just now, a bit more on the national policies. Um, I understand you had a few interviews with CGTN and mm -hmm. you said that um, you will take the spirit of the two sessions meeting back to a local community. Mm. So let's be this program will be the first time you share that more with the viewers. So what were the key takeaways from the two sessions that you've been there? What are the main things that you remember and you want us to remember? I think uh, uh, to, to understand and learn about the message from the two sections, very important things. First of all, we have to understand uh, the message delivered by our leader, uh, President Xi, during his visit to various delegates. This can be searched from the internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, apart from what message delivered by presidency, we have to understand the most important work report presented by Premier Lee. And this is uh, usually the focus. Uh, you know, uh, from this report, we clearly understand what have been achieved in the past uh, year, that is last year. We have achieved a GDP of 5.2% 5 5 growth. Uh, our GDP is... Uh, uh, is at a, you know, a very you know, high base and we can still, in this uh, difficult situation, right. both internally and externally, achieve, achieve a 5.2% growth. That growth achievement is uh, you know, uh, you know, not easy to achieve. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, we have created uh, not less than 12 uh, million employment opportunity. We keep our inflation low at around 3%. Uh, the consumer price index is about at, uh, at 0 0.3, something like that. That is the price level is at a stable uh, uh, level so that people can do not need to experience high inflation and high price rise. And all this achievement is, uh, is uh, managed uh, through the, you know, our central government, uh, a combined effort, apart from understanding the past um, Performance, I think another important thing that we have to uh, learn and fully understand is uh, uh, what are the way forward, mm -hmm. especially what are the key po national policy initiatives. Uh, one of the very hot key uh, after the two sections is we have to produce or develop high quality, uh, new quality productive force in order to enhance further high quality development. I repeat, new quality productive force. This is a new term 
uh, mentioned by our presidency during his visit to Heilongjiang. Mm -hmm. And then he re-emphasized that we have to look into the local situation uh, yes. to develop that new quality productive force. To me, what is mean by new quality productive force, we all understand that we are in a, you know, uh, uh, very uh, you know, a challenging situation. Mm -hmm. A lot of area we face bottleneck. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to have bro a breakthrough. How can we achieve that breakthrough? We have to have that breakthrough through innovation, technology, high quality education. We have to have uh, sufficient, um, uh, you know, talent uh, to 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 move so that our economy, our industrial, can grow continuously and also we have some breakthrough in in products uh, productivity and also uh, uh, supply chain etc yeah since you mentioned all those terms I mean I'm sure people are hearing word like high quality um, high quality development um, all that term I mean how do you, how do we how should we interpret those high quality terms it sounds very good but what is it actually well to me uh, you know uh, our country uh, continue the high quality development uh, for over the past uh, years. And we can see we have achieved a lot, like uh, I think one of the uh, most uh, uh, you know, common product that are welcomed by the world is our electric car, right? right? Now you know the electric car produced by our country share 60% of the yes. uh, world market. And this is uh, such an advanced, uh, you know, an innovation uh, product and we are all proud of. And we have the C-19 uh, aircraft just produced and we have a lot of breakthrough. Right. And uh, we are moving towards our digital economy. Mm -hmm. And in terms of green economy, we have also achieved a lot. You know, when we uh, look back over the past 10 years, our country do spend a lot of resources, a lot of combined effort to tackle pollution, pollutant, mm -hmm. and when we now uh, you know, go to attend two sections in Beijing, I feel, you know, uh, the achievement that we have achieved. You know, uh, when we go to, like, for example, Beijing in the past, uh, I mean, uh, 10 years ago, you can feel uh, the air quality, right. Uh, right? Different air quality. So things have improved. Yeah, but now very, you know, significant improvement. Right. One quick question. How about in terms of, you know, we all know that, um, uh, our, our mainland is doing very well with all the digital transformation. Anything you have spotted this time when you're in Beijing? Are things getting more modernized? Uh, yes, I think uh, we, you know, every, uh, you know, every two to three months when we go to different cities in our country, we can find new things. Right. That is uh, how we work. Like infrastructure, uh, we are amazing to see that we have a lot of good infrastructure. Our high-speed train, is our, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a very, you know, an, another very, uh, a, a, another infrastructure that we should power off. Right. Uh, the electric car and digital economy. And if you have a chance to look at the, uh, you know, the, the digitalization and also the technology used for governance, you know, everywhere. Now, a lot of city, uh, they use technology in, yes. in, in, in governance. Uh, uh, you know, all this, you know, uh, we can see uh, we have achieved uh, yes. a lot of breakthrough. Right. Um, sorry, I mean, I, I'm sure the viewers are going to start wanting me to ask you this direct question. I mean, Hong Kong, after the, <clears throat> the pandemic, we we're expecting things to get back to normal. But quite the contrary, we're facing huge challenges in the actual economy um, because of the interest rate, because of the geopolitics, mm. because of the... Our, um, our, uh, mainland um, counterparts, they, they are not, I mean, we're not having the, the rich mainland uh, visitors anymore. So Hong Kong, we are all suffering. We are all wanting a new breakthrough. We had the budget, we had the financial secretary here uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm sure people are looking for what is our, gov what is our national government going to do in terms of policy against the, the ailing economy in mainland? As you said, it was much higher base than 5.2%. So we still got 5.2% growth. So can you see some light at the end of a tunnel that the economy is going to be turning around with the policy? And how about the geopolitics? I mean, that's definitely affecting us. I mean, I know a lot of funds are not going to mainland because of mm. that. A lot of visitors, are, visitors are, uh, want not to go. What do you say to that? 
Well, uh, we have uh, to admit that we are facing great challenges externally, yes. the geopolitics. I would say this part we cannot change, especially uh, from the Hong Kong perspective. We are mm. such a small economy. We, of course, we have to understand our national policy and we have to integrate to our country further. Mm -hmm. uh, we are part of our country. Therefore, we are inevitably face the challenge from the mm -hmm. geopolitics. But uh, I... I feel strongly that after attending these two conference, uh, two two sections, I have full confidence towards the uh, uh, the development of our country. Uh, you know, even uh, facing all these challenges, we continue and persist in, uh, you know, working towards mm -hmm. the high quality mm -hmm. development. We can see continued breakthrough, and Hong Kong is part of China, and you know, uh, national leader whenever they come to visit us. Uh, they give us full confidence that Hong Kong's issue is not Hong Kong alone. It is the uh, whole country's uh, mm -hmm. uh, also treasure and care about Hong Kong. Therefore, uh, we, we have problem, uh, right, of course, in, in, in this, uh, uh, this moment, maybe. Uh, like, for example, the financial centre, our country uh, do want Hong Kong to continue to right. be the international financial centre. You know, because uh, like, for example, when we meet with Mr. Ding, we have one delegate, we have one deputy who also suggests some measures to boost Hong Kong's financial right. centres. And he clearly mentioned that more measures will come. And therefore, right. we should have full confidence uh, uh, from our country. Uh, our country will support Hong Kong's development. But of course, uh, from the Hong Kong perspective, we of course, can rely on our country's full support, but we have to perform our role. Right. Uh, maintain our international cities, we mm -hmm. have to attract talent, attract uh, fun, and also attract technology in order to help our country to further develop. Well, thank you for a very concise summary of what Hong Kong should do. I'm going to ask you a last question. Um, Financial Secretary Paul has said that we will aim to get a growth of 25 to 3.5% this year. However, Getting t more talents for Hong Kong is one very important because we are running uh, lower in numbers. However, I'm sure the viewer is going to ask you, looks like we are attracting more people with a mainland background coming to Hong Kong, making Hong Kong not as much as an international city. What is your perspective on that? A quick answer. Well, I think uh, we have to uh, continue to maintain Hong Kong as an international city. That is very important. Apart from, you know, attracting people from our motherland. We have to attract people from different parts of the world. But now maybe the international uh, international cities uh, or attract people mm -hmm. from different parts of the world, we have to extend further. Like mm -hmm. ASEAN country, like Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, we have to have our uh, we have to have a wider spectrum. That is my, my All remark. Right. All right. Thank you, Stari, for enlightening us on this impact of the recent two sessions in Beijing on Hong Kong's trajectory. As we forge ahead, it is clear that collaboration and strategic planning are essential for harnessing Hong Kong's strength amidst the evolving economic dynamics. International solicitor Sushila River said, disparity is not a policy issue, it is an open education issue. To have the best positive impact the Hong Kong people need to have a good understanding of the why and the purpose of important policies. Have a good evening and see you next week.